welcome you to our 17th annual salon. Uh, actually, we started this 18 years ago, my wife and I, uh, and uh, that has remained some family enterprise up to this day. We have no foundation behind us or anything. This is just a private matter that Gülchen and I have done and we continue that as long as we like it and we stop it at the moment when we don't like it anymore. Um, I'm glad to see how many new young people came to this uh, event. Um, uh, on the other hand, I'm also proud of the fact that there are many regulars. There are some people that came practically to every single meeting that we, that we had. In 18 years, of course, lots of things has happened, even to this meeting, apart from what happened outside of the world. We will talk about that during the, uh, during the speeches. Um, Bodrum, uh, we started very small with just maybe 20 people and then uh, after a few years that grew to this size. The size is basically uh, limited by the size of the hotel. We have the great privilege due to Gülschen, my wife, uh, that we have exclusive use of this hotel during this week. There are very few other conferences where you will ever have this privilege that you are the only ones who occupy this hotel and there are no foreign intruders of any kind. Um, the other things that happened during 18 years was of course that Bodrum grew into a boom town. Um, it was a small, small town uh, I think about 30,000 inhabitants. In the meantime, it has probably 200,000 and the entire peninsula has well more than a million inhabitants. Budrum is the boom town uh, in, in Turkey. The other things that I should mention in the course of 18 years, um, when some of you guys were still toddlers, I assume, um, we also lost a few valuable speakers and participants here in, uh, in this conference. Um, the first one to die of our speakers was Justin Raimondo. Um, he died in 2019 at, at the age of 67. Um, Justin Raimondo had been the author of a, the bi a biography of Murray Rothbards um, and uh, a book on the American old right, the isolationist or non-interventionist uh, political movement in the United States that formed before World War II and was then smashed in the course of World War II, of course. And he was also the founder of antiwar.com, uh, a website that I can recommend. Um, the next, the next person who left us was Norman Stone. Norman Stone, a famous historian, was a professor at Cambridge, a uh, professor at Oxford. Then uh, he left uh, England and uh, uh, went to Turkey and uh, was a professor at Bilkent University in Ankara, uh, one of the leading private universities in, in Turkey. Uh, I remember Norman Stone telling me that he got a, Oxford offered him a buyout he, because he was always considered a slightly scandalous person. Um, and uh, Bill Kent at the same time offered him twice the salary and half the teaching load at Bill Kent. And uh, since uh, Norman Stone did speak Turkish, um, that was no problem for him to make this move. And he came here for, for many years. Norman Stone, of course, famous for his books on World War I. Um, he is also the author of um, 
a short history of Turkey, which I very much recommend. You might even be able to pick it up at airport stores. Um, of course, not in the German airport, but here in the main Turkish airport, in the bookstore, they tend to have uh, Norman Stone's book on Turkey. It's very, very interesting book. And he was also a speechwriter for Margaret Thatcher for a while. So he was a very dear friend. Uh, unfortunately, again, he died in, in 2019, also at the age of 78. Uh, then we had Paul Cantor, uh, who died last year at the age of 76. He had been um, a student, as a high school student, he attended Ludwig von Mises' private seminar in New York, then became a big Shakespeare expert, uh, and also wrote some books on, on popular, popular culture. Um, in this year, one of our other speakers who had been here several times, Richard Lynn, died at the ripe age of 91. Uh, he was the foremost uh, author on uh, IQ studies. His most famous book is IQ and the Wealth of Nations, where he shows that average IQ in a country and GDP per capita in a country are correlated 0.7, which for the social sciences is an enormously high uh, uh, correlation. Uh, and uh, he also has uh, the claim to fame to something very funny that is, he, he was the first professor I ever heard of from whom they took away the title as an emeritus professor. Um, so an emeritus professor is a retired professor who is no longer teaching at the university. Um, and uh, because uh, his views were considered to be so politically incorrect uh, at the petition of the students at the University of Ulster, they decided we will take away the title of emeritus professor from Professor Lin. Uh, I somehow expected that that might happen to me at the University of Nevada too, but so far, I must say, it has not, it has not yet uh, happened. And then special mention should be given to my dear friend Yuri Maltsev, who also died this year, who has been here also several times um, as, a as a speaker. Yuri Maltsev was a former advisor to Gorbachev. Uh, he uh, uh, escaped from, from the Soviet Union because he went to a conference in, to Finland, which was one of the places where Russians were allowed to go at that time, and then was approached uh, by Americans to uh, come to the United States. And uh, Yuri Maltsev has given a hilarious speech on, uh, on his uh, escape from the Soviet Union here at, uh, at, at this conference. I recommend that you watch that somehow on, on, the vi on videos. I will say a little bit about our videos that, that we have uh, produced in, in the course of the years. Um, uh, he became a great personal friend, also visited us several times in Istanbul. Um, so he wanted to come last year, had a little accident last year, couldn't come the last minute, and then all of a sudden, I still don't know exactly what happened, um, he died at the age of 72. So now I am the oldest person here. At the beginning, there were plenty of people who were older than I am, but I reassured myself with uh, Tony Daniels, he is a couple of months younger than I am, so I do have the claim here to be the oldest of all people. Uh, my wife, of course, never ages. Um, um, but, in, but in any case, um, and also fitting into this topic of getting older, I have to mention that uh, Sean Gabb, who had been our regular speaker, uh, had a medical emergency just a, f a week or so ago, um, and um, 
uh, everything is all right as it looks like it. Um, but uh, the doctors and his wife and his daughter did not permit him to travel. Um, because of that, we, I will take myself, I used my privilege as the king of this enterprise. Uh, I asked my queen if that would be permitted um, to speak a little bit longer in the morning. And uh, uh, Alessandro uh, Fusilo will take the place of Sean Gap in the afternoon. He will be the first speaker in the, af in the after, uh, afternoon. Now, I should mention that uh, the names that I mentioned indicate already that this conference is an interdisciplinary venture. Uh, there are conferences that specialize, specialize only on monetary things. There are conferences that specialize only on ethnic studies or whatever it is. Here, all sorts of topics will be discussed, but always, of course, from a politically incorrect point of view. That is the requirement that I have for people coming here, being invited here, that I don't want any politically correct people here. I want people to be able to speak freely and say whatever prejudices they have uh, and let everybody else know about, know about them. Um, now coming to my speech today, I should make you aware of the following. In Germany, as in many other countries, there have been laws passed that uh, make it a punishable offense to delegitimize the state and government and governmental politicians. To tell you one little anecdote, one student in Germany recently said, what a sh country uh, and what sh politicians. They did not allow me to go to the hospital to see my dying grandmother because of the corona restrictions. So this was considered to be delegitimizing delegit government and government officials, and he was punished with a fine of 1,500 euros. For just for saying this, okay, Turkey, Turkey seems to be a free country. Um, there is also one way around it, at least so far. If you declare everything that you say as a satire, um, and uh, this is what I will do now. Um, <laughs> So whatever you hear from me, just take it that is not meant seriously. It is all satire. And this entire event is a clown show uh, that might alleviate a little bit the punishment as that otherwise might uh, come down on us. Please keep that in mind that everything here is not meant seriously. Uh, and now I start with a serious subject. 